Well, hello once again, everybody. Matt Kleskowski here. And uh, as you are watching this, uh, right now there's a big conference going on out in Los Angeles. It's Adobe Max. It's, it's really Adobe's biggest uh, event of the year. And they always announce updates to all their products there. Um, I'm actually out teaching at Adobe Max right now, but I pre-recorded this video because I wanted to have it ready the day that those updates came out. Uh, basically, Adobe you know, typically announces a lot of updates across the board to, to all their software. Uh, of course, Lightroom Classic is not excluded from that. So we have some new features. I figured we'll do a quick video here, take a look at what's new. Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so the way that I'm going to break this up is going to be basically two different parts. I'm going to do, I'll, I'll go through the two main big features first, and then there's a couple of smaller ones that you'll probably want to know about as well. Uh, so as far as the big stuff goes, uh, first one is if you head up to the photo menu, go down to photo merge. We've had HDR, we've had panorama. Now we have HDR panorama. So if you shoot HDR photos and you like to take panos and you're like me where I, I basically stopped even trying to merge them because it just, it took too much time. Um, so this will probably get me shooting that way again, because uh, you can shoot your HDRs. You can see here, I've got a whole, I've got a number of brackets. Um, I usually separate by two stops. Uh, so you got my dark exposure, the middle, the bright one. And then just you know, kind of panned over for each one of these photos, and it's a it's a pretty decent sized one here. I think there's uh, eight different brackets going across, so it was just too time consuming for me to to start to merge these things before. Uh, so essentially, you select all of them just like you always have. Head up to the photo menu, go down to photo merge, and you do HDR panorama, and Lightroom will take care of the rest. So, um, takes a little bit of time. This is these were taken with a Sony A7R II 42 megapixel camera. It's actually moving along pretty good, but it's going to move better through the magic of post processing. And once it has merged everything together, you will be in the usual dialog box. Um, that's kind of a combination of your HDR and pano settings here. Um, I, I don't even know why this is an option under boundary warp. It should just be always set to 100 because I think it always does a, a good job there. Um, and then we'll go ahead here and it's going to merge everything together and it'll leave us with a brand new, uh, a brand new merged file back in the library view. And of course, that brand new file is just like any other image. So once you go ahead and uh, select it, you can go into your develop module and you can do all of the usual things that you would normally do to your photos. So gone are the days of trying to figure out, you know, do I merge the HDRs and then do a pano? Do I do the pano first and then merge it? You don't even have to worry about that anymore. Even not that it ever really mattered. Um, but now you got just one easy step to, uh, to do it and take care of it. All right, moving on to the next newest, uh, biggest feature. Let's take a look here. I've got some photos. So what they've done is, and, and this is, there's a couple of, there's a couple of um, kind of precursors to this. So there's what they call a depth map. Okay, and, and when, whenever we do our, uh, our adjustment brush or graduated filter, any of that, and we, we go and do something to the photo. We've had range masking actually since last year. Uh, this time last year is when range masking got added. Um, and last year what happened is we got color and luminance. Well, now we have depth. All right, so if you're shooting with one of those phones that has that depth feature, it's usually in portrait mode. Um, it's got some type of a depth feature to it. Um, and by the, that's where the caveats are because it's got to be, it's a certain phone. Um, and then it's also certain operating systems. So if you're using an older operating system, it doesn't support that, uh, that high efficiency, that HEIC format, which is also part of this as well. So you've got to make sure you got the right operating system and, uh, and the, the right phone that will capture this stuff. And this is actually through Lightroom Mobile's camera. Okay, so I'll make sure um, on the screen here, I can kind of point out where you would find this inside of Lightroom's mobile, Lightroom Mobile's camera to be able to capture this type of a photo. So once you're there, um, I'm gonna, I'm, here, let me go ahead and uh, clear what I just did here. I'm just gonna do a really, really light brush in the corner. What I really wanna show you first is, you, you first have to do something to the photo through one of your local adjustments, all right? Whether it's the grad, the radial, or the brush, you've got to do something to the photo, which enables range masking. Once you enable range masking, you can then go over here to depth mode. I don't want to do anything to the photo yet that's going to work on a depth because I want to show you what's happening, like what, what is Lightroom seeing as depth? And the best way to do that is click on this little checkbox where it says show depth mask. Okay, 
So what I did is I focused on, this is right out of my hotel room here. This is the, the little blind uh, Turner thingy. That's the official term for it, by the way. And uh, we'll turn it on. So what you're seeing is whatever's white is your foreground. Whatever's you know, dark, dark gray or black is your background. Okay, so that's your depth map. That's the, the map that's automatically been built into this high efficiency format uh, photo. And I understand, you know, not every camera and not everything supports us, but th this is where this stuff is going. This is, this is most definitely where this stuff is going. So um, white is what your foreground is, black is where your background is. Not going to do too much to this photo. Let's let's. let's I, I wanted to show you what the depth map looked like on a pretty simple photo. You can see that's the little adjuster, and then the curtain was right next to it. So of course that's all on my foreground plane. Let's switch to another one again, taken right at my hotel room here um, of my camera. And so I'm going to go. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to just put a little adjustment in the corner just so I can enable this and show you the depth map here. And so you can see here again white and light gray are the foreground areas all the dark stuff is the background area okay so let's do let's say for example i wanted to take my graduated filter i'll bring the exposure down i just all i want to do is darken this background back here and i don't really feel like doing it painstakingly with a brush nor do i feel like jumping into photoshop to do it so i would just take my grad filter do a big broad stroke and of course darken the background okay so this is where we can go in and use the depth map. Um, and again, the, uh, the, the white is the foreground, the black is the background, and now we have red in here. Red is showing you the adjustment that we made. This is, this is the darkening adjustment that we don't want to overlap over onto our camera here, okay? So what we can do is say, all right, let me go ahead and grab my range, and then let me start to limit this range so that it's not being adjusted or added to the entire photo so it's only being added to part of the photo and what you're going to see is you're going to see it starts to slowly go what you're looking for is the red remember the red is the darkening adjustment and as i move this you're going to see it starts to kind of eliminate itself from being over the camera okay now let's turn that checkbox off so we can actually watch what it's doing see how it's kind of just hiding itself from being over the camera Okay, and then you've got your smoothness setting, which is going to kind of respect how, uh, how smooth you want these edges to be. Usually a lower to middle setting is going to be best for that one. But if you just look at a quick before and after, now I'm able to go in here, darken that background, and not really mess with the foreground. But I'm not doing it based on all tonal changes, which is what we had before today. I'm actually able to use that depth map that was built automatically into this photo format that we have in some of these newer phones and cameras. I'm able to use that depth map to uh, to go in there and make changes itself. Okay. Alrighty, moving on. Another neat little feature here. This is not necessarily a new feature. Uh, here's a, a photo I took last fall, and I, I mean I wouldn't do too much to it. I'd probably just go into whites, maybe blacks, add a little bit more contrast. There's a lot of fog and everything going here. That's actually why I like that photo. I've lost some of that fog. Well. Dehaze has been a good way to cut through haze. And I would, I would never ever, you know, one of the popular questions I get when I show a photo like this is, why don't you use dehaze to get rid of that, that haze? I, I would never want to get rid of the haze. That's why I took this photo in the first place. I like the fog and the haze. Atmosphere is a good thing for photos. So um, I would never use positive dehaze. Now, a lot of times I would try to go in and use negative dehaze because that actually gives you a haze. And I like to I like to actually go in and, and kind of add to the atmosphere in photos. It was never that good. Well, you can go a little bit more negative with the haze now, and you'll get uh, you'll get a better result from it. Rather than just washing it out with pure white, um, it actually does a good job of kind of keeping some detail and contrast while still introducing a little bit of haze. So, you know, positive haze is basically dehazing, removing the haze in the photo. Um, negative dehaze is actually adding it back in. And in this case, I'm able to, uh, to get in there and get a, a little bit more of a foggy look while still adding some of that contrast that I did uh, with the sliders above here. All right, 
A uh, couple other things. If you go down to your camera calibration panel, um, you will see process version number five. So we have a new process version. Number four was the one previous to today. That was the, the latest one. Uh, process version number five. Mostly the changes here are the way that it's going to render high ISO files. So uh, uh, the way that's going to, you know, the, the way that it works with noise, especially in some of the darker um, areas of your photo, kind of eliminates some of that purple haze and that purple fringe that you see sometimes with a high ISO uh, photo helps out there. So it's, if you're any photo you've edited before today is going to still stay process version number four, it's not automatically going to update for you. If you want to, you can come down to the camera calibration panel and update it to five and you can actually see. So I haven't really done anything other than dehaze on this photo and you can see the difference. That was process version number four. That's the old dehaze. And there's the new dehaze. So see how it keeps all that detail, but it still gives you that hazy look. I digress. Um, so, but you can always come back in here. If you've got an old photo, you can change it to process version number five. Any new photos you import will automatically go to number five. And then the last thing we'll take a look at, we're actually not even going to look at it, but if you head up here to the file menu, uh, you will notice there are two tethered options up here, one for Canon and one for Nikon and others. So there has been some uh, enhanced features and um, capability and performance number of the, one of the biggest parts uh, for Canon cameras. Guys, don't shoot the messenger. I have no idea why it's just Canon. I shoot not I, I shoot Sony. We, we all know Sony's better anyway. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Um, anyway, I, I have no idea why it's uh, why it's only Canon. I have to assume that that was one of the first ones they picked off and that others are to come. But just understand if you're a Canon shooter, there's been some performance and um, added capabilities for your tethered capture inside of there. Okay, guys, make sure you head out to uh, your Adobe Creative Cloud app. That's your usually your little app up here and uh, go to your apps and you can see if you launch it today, this is for Lightroom Classic, but if you launch it today, you should probably see a whole bunch of different updates inside of there, depending on your Creative Cloud plan. Uh, go ahead and update. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you again real soon.